Certain engine faults can result in decreased output power, and sometimes these faults are difficult or impossible to diagnose with a scanner. Often difficult to diagnose problems are a result of incorrect engine mechanical timing. A common way to isolate this kind of problem involves disassembly, which can be time consuming and expensive. Let us discuss an alternate method to physical disassembly. The car in our case is a Daewoo Nexia with the 1.5i 16 valve dual overhead cam engine. The car owner complained of lack of power and lower gas mileage. Connecting the oscilloscope to this car is very simple. Connect the USB autoscope to the computer's USB port via the USB AB cable. Connect the ignition adapter to the USB autoscope via its dedicated cable. Connect the ignition adapter's power leads to the vehicle battery. It is important to maintain the proper polarity. Red clip is for positive and the black clip is for ground. Disconnect the ignition cable from cylinder number one spark plug and connect it to the external spark tester. The black capacitive probe will synchronize the measured data to the spark in the first cylinder, which allows us to measure the ignition timing advance. Connect the probe to the ignition adapter and clip it to the cylinder number one's ignition cable. The pressure transducer will measure the internal pressure in the cylinder, but without the combustion. Connect the signal cable of the transducer to the first input of the USB autoscope device. Connect the power leads to the vehicle battery using the same points as the ignition adapter power leads. We have to unscrew the spark plug for the first cylinder and put the transducer in its place. The spark plugs for this engine are fitted deep in the block, so we must use the pressure extender. Electrically disconnect cylinder number one's fuel injector. During this test, no fuel should enter the cylinder. Start the USB oscilloscope software and choose the PX mode. In the plug-in user interface, choose the sensor type PX plus longer because we are using the pressure extender. Start the engine and let it idle. Start recording data. And within several seconds, gradually accelerate the engine to 3000 RPM. Release the throttle and wait until the engine returns to idle. Abruptly push the gas pedal to the floor, and when the RPM reaches 3000, release the pedal. Stop recording data. Now let us check the acquired data of the internal pressure in the cylinder. The program automatically identifies the divergences at key points in the chart. Points D and E shifted to the left implies over-advanced exhaust valve timing. Point I shifted to the left also implies over-advanced intake valve timing. Let us go to analyze the acquired data using the script written by Andre Shulgin. Choose Run the script from the menu. The script outputs several tabs. The Report tab contains the text part. The following values are shown here. Measured compression ratio, 10 to 1. According to the engine specifications, this value is on the upper tolerance limit. If the compression ratio in a particular cylinder is lower when compared with others, it could mean a bent connecting rod as the result of ingestion of a substantial amount of liquid into the cylinder. If the compression ratio in a particular cylinder is higher, it could mean an increased amount of carbon deposits in the cylinder due to internal oil consumption. In the same tab, there is also the value 17% for the compression loss in the power stroke. An engine in good mechanical condition would normally be between 10% and 20%. If the reported value exceeds the limit, it could point to a compression leak in that cylinder, such as worn out piston rings or damaged valves. The Amount tab shows the chart of the gas amount in the first cylinder in correlation to the piston position and stroke during the first five engine cycles. 
The green portion shows the cylinder filling process during the first intake stroke. The beginning of the blue portion indicates the end of the filling process. The beginning of the horizontal part of the blue portion denotes the end of the intake stroke, at which point the intake valve is closed. The yellow portion corresponds with the piston power stroke. The pressure data is recorded without the fuel combustion, therefore the horizontal part of the yellow portion represents, in fact, the gas expansion in the cylinder. Both valves are closed during this stroke. Therefore, the amount of the gas in the cylinder is virtually unchanged. There is a negative pressure in the cylinder at the moment of the exhaust valve opening, hence the gas from the exhaust manifold is sucked back into the cylinder. The end of the horizontal part of the yellow portion denotes the beginning of the exhaust valve opening. The red portion of the gas amount chart depicts the process of expelling the gas into the exhaust manifold. The beginning of the horizontal part of the blue portion and the end of the horizontal part of the yellow portion should overlap at 145 degrees on most production engines. In fact, the exhaust valve started to open at 130 degrees after top dead center, which is 15 degrees advanced. The intake valve is 15 degrees advanced too. The actual shape and position of the red and the green chart portions within the valve overlap section is typical for advanced camshaft timing. The timing phases tab shows the gas diagram as well, but now in correlation to the crankshaft angle. The green chart portion depicts the gas intake into the cylinder during the first piston stroke. The beginning of the blue portion denotes the end of the filling process. This point in the blue portion shows the intake valve is closed, thus ending the intake stroke. The yellow portion corresponds with the expansion stroke. The end of the yellow portion depicts the backward gas circulation from the exhaust manifold to the cylinder. The end of the yellow portion corresponds with the exhaust valve opening. The red chart portion depicts the expelling of the gas from the cylinder into the exhaust manifold. In the chart, we can see that the intake valve has been closed at 160 degrees before top dead center, which is 15 degrees advanced. The exhaust valve started to open at 130 degrees after top dead center, which is also 15 degrees advanced. We can see that the timing is asymmetrical in this case. The actual shape of this chart during valve overlap is typical for the advanced engine timing. The ignition timing tab shows the chart for ignition timing according to engine speed and load. The higher the engine load, the warmer the color will be. Ignition advance was 40 degrees at 3000 RPM without load. and 30 degrees on the loaded engine. The blue chart portion depicts the ignition timing advance at the minimal load in deceleration mode. The exhaust tab shows the amount of engine work used to expel the gas from the cylinder. The red line is the acceptable limit of power loss during exhaust. If the chart line is over the red line, it indicates a restricted exhaust path. The diagnostic conclusions are The engine mechanical timing is incorrect. The intake camshaft is 15 degrees over advanced, which is actually one sprocket on the camshaft gear. The exhaust camshaft is 15 degrees over advanced as well. The compression ratio is a bit higher. The cylinder leakage is within the limits. The ignition timing is properly controlled by the engine control unit. And the exhaust gas back pressure is within the tolerance limits. The mechanical timing fault was confirmed during disassembly and repair. Let us repeat the timing check with the motor tester after the repair. Open the USB oscilloscope application and select the PX mode. Start and idle the engine.
Start recording data. Smoothly increase the engine to 3000 RPM. Release the accelerator to close the throttle. Abruptly fully open the throttle and when the RPM reaches 3000, release the pedal. Stop recording data. All the data in the report tab is the same. Now we can see on the gas diagram that the beginning of the horizontal part of the blue portion and the end of the horizontal part of the yellow portion are both situated at 147 degrees, which is a common value for most production engines. The chart now has the correct shape in the valve overlap area. It is apparent when you look at the chart that now the timing is symmetric. The chart now has the correct shape in the valve overlap area. The ignition timing chart shows the correct operation of the ignition timing subsystem. The ignition timing advance is controlled according to the engine RPM and load. The exhaust loss chart is unchanged as well and lies below the red line. The car owner drove the vehicle and confirmed that the engine accelerates much better and after some time he also confirmed that the fuel economy has increased. The owner declined to further investigate the cause of the slightly higher compression ratio.